Hello. Good evening. Hi. And welcome. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this week's uh, version of the Mac Mirror Inn. Uh, as you can tell, I I'm not joined by my good companion, Rich McKean, this week. We've sent them off down the cash and carry. We're running low on some beers and some uh, some crisps and nuts and all that sort of good stuff. So uh, Rich is off to do the shopping. But I am joined by the fantastic duo that is drinking whiskey with friends. Uh, and that is um, Arian and Petra. Good evening, guys. Good Hi. evening. Hi. How are you both? Are you well? Yeah, very well, thank you. Yeah, really good. Thank good. you. Yeah. Good. Right. So a few parish notices before we before we start. So uh, last week, uh, in fact, no, this week. What I went about last week. This week, uh, Wednesday just gone. We launched our brand new uh, spring seasonal uh, for for this year, uh, and that's Bjorksav. Uh, absolutely fantastic dram uh, using birch sap wine casks. Um, absolutely beautiful. It's nice out of the fridge actually. So one of those nice chilled drams, but. Like we always advocate, drink your whiskey any way you wish. Uh, and we'll cover a bit more of that as, as we go on with uh, Aaron and Petra. Um, but shows coming up. Obviously, we've got this evening. Uh, next Thursday, uh, we have our monthly, uh, our monthly core range plus seasonal tasting. And it will be Yak Liquor next week. And so, yeah, core range and Yak Liquor. Uh, and that'll be the last one for Yak Liquor for a good few months, I would imagine. Uh, and then, obviously, next Friday, we shall be joined uh, by uh, Hector McLean uh, from Jeffrey Street um, Whiskey and Cigars, or Whiskey and Tobacco. Um, absolutely fantastic shop through in Edinburgh. So, guys, if you're ever up this way, because obviously you're down in that the big smoke, aren't you? Uh, so, if you're ever up this way and you go to Edinburgh, then you uh, must visit Jeffrey Street. It's a lovely shop. Um, they got a, one of those walking humidors. Uh, so if, if a nice cigar with your dram is what you're after, uh, they've got a beautiful walking humidor and stuff like that. So uh, it's nice. I like it. So yeah. So we'll have um, and we'll, we'll talk. Uh, we'll talk drams and um, tobacco pairings uh, next week. So that should be good uh, and fun. Uh, so guys, you, you know you've got your sample of uh, Bjorksav in the week because you're you know you're influencers now. Do you know what I mean? With with your Instagram account, etc. Uh what are your first impressions of it? Yeah, well um we we actually so we, we talked took some photos with a squirrel actually. Uh, I don't know if you <laughs> saw <laughs> when we tagged you <laughs> we are so we, we actually do some um some local litter picking like that we okay, cool. a picking club and um we were going around doing our litter picking and um I as always we, we have drams or bottles on us. Um, and there was the squirrel. Um, no, no, no. I said no bottles this time, and he put the little one in his pocket. <laughs> well, there you go. It worked out well for you on this occasion, guys. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, it was in the park, and there were some squirrels around. So, we were like, maybe the squirrels would like to be there. And they did. <laughs> I saw that picture. I thought, oh, that's got to be a stuffed one or something for sure. Like, you know, how can you get like that close to the squirrel? Do you know what I mean? I'd take the picture without it looking like a big blur or something as it as it bolts away, you know? Uh, so, no, that was fantastic. Absolutely fantastic, guys. But before we carry on, there's the bell. So, it must be a roughly about 18.05. Uh, so, it's my round. Uh, Rich is not here to put his hand in his pocket for a change. Uh, so, it's just the, the rounds are on me, guys. So, ladies and gentlemen out there, uh, let us know what you're having this evening. Uh, pop it in the comments and we shall uh, reply. Or also, if you've got any questions uh, for myself or for our for our VIP patrons, I always do that. I do it that way. Right? And you're not. You're there. So, uh, exactly. <laughs> forever, forever confusing my own self. Um, so, yeah, so, let us know what you're drinking. So, Ari and Petra, what are you having this evening, guys? Oh, very nice. We're surprising, mate. <laughs> We are having McMira. <laughs> yep, we're having the Grand Tea. So. Nice, nice, Petra. That was that was your favourite, wasn't it? So far, your favourite whiskey last year. Yeah, yeah, there was actually. You're right. Um, I tried quite a lot of them. It's uh, obviously it's my favourite sherry Oloroso. So it's just yeah, um, very lovely, flowery, nutty, Drum. honey drum. I would yeah. say yeah. Very soft and easy, e very easy to drink um, for Friday evening <laughs> in <laughs> lockdown. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and you're, and you're both drinking that this evening, are you? Yeah, 
it, I, I have to say that I'm a fan as well. Like it's 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 so delicate. So um, you know that floral note that you're getting the it's just it's a really really delicious jam. It, yeah, yeah. Happy. I'm glad that you enjoy it. Uh, that that we're, we're obviously you know we fed that back to Angela and that as well. So everyone's quite happy as well. And uh, so this yeah. evening I'm doing myself a. Uh, uh, I'm going to say one of my signature cocktails. I don't really have a signature cocktail. I just make things up. Uh, but this is a blackberry grog. Uh, so that's a, a, a nice house pour of a Vintersol uh, or a double, if you want to be old-fashioned, but uh, a double Vintersol uh, with uh, just a, a small splash, about 10 mil of a blackberry liqueur or creme de mure, uh, topped up over ice, uh, with ginger ale, and we've got some blackberries out of my freezer that I picked from the garden last year, uh, and some mint that has just taken over my kitchen window, quite frankly. Uh, so, guys, Skull. Cheers. I should say Nasjavi. <laughs> you can see that in Czech, Czech language. <laughs> so, Nasjavi, guys. Nasjavi. Mm hmm. Cool. Oh, Tamara's on the Little Brown Hunt. That's cool. So that's um, Little Brown Dog, uh, a small independent uh, bottler uh, up in Aberdeen, um, bottled uh, very recently a 12-year-old single cask McMira. Oh, wow. And it is beautiful. I'm not just saying that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Oh, Jess, is, Jess has had a uh, delivery of Bjork's have as well. Even Jess, looking forward to uh, doing it. So I'm doing a tasting with Jess in her Scandi Whiskey Tasting Group uh, on Monday night. So that should be pretty good. That sold out. So that was really good. Uh, someone's on the on the hard bag. Oof, bit of a heavy hitter for this early on a Friday, but I'm not here to judge. No <laughs> judgment by me. So guys, um, you're a, you're a, you're a, you know you're a, uh, VIP patrons. So suppose we should find out a bit more about you. So Aaron and Petra, who are you? That's a good question. <laughs> but yeah, maybe. Me? You start? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I'm Arian, um, and I'm originally from Paul in Dorset, so South Coast, um, and now live in London. Um, and we met three years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I, I'm a lawyer, which oh, cool. I'd just like to apologise to everyone. Um, <laughs> Um, and yeah, so work in the city, um, uh, and at the moment, obviously, we're we're living in Woolwich, which is an interesting and 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 wonderful place. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Brilliant. So you didn't, you didn't fancy joining the Royal Marines then, coming out of pool? <laughs> no. If I'm honest, so my my dad's actually my dad's actually in the military. So um, all right, okay, cool. He's yes, he's down there, but um, yeah, not for me. No, I'm from Plymouth originally, uh, and I joined the Navy. Uh, so that that's me. Oh God, I've been a civvy for twelve April. The eight April would be twelve years. No, be eleven years. Sorry, eleven years. I would have been. I would have, I would have been out. Oh, that's good times. Good times. So Petra, that's Harry. Who are you? Okay, um, so my name is Petra. Um, as you can probably hear from my accent, um not british i'm from the czech republic um it's a little town called Przebicz. um and i came to london five years ago now um so that's the only place i've i lived um in the uk uh i quite like it it's nice <laughs> but I, I do like pool a lot i i think i i do like pool a little bit more but london is fine uh, and yeah, as Irene said, we met three years ago, um, very nice romantic story, we met online on the dating app. <laughs> that's pretty much the norm these days though guys, isn't it? People still, people yeah. still trying to attach it, no that's not, people still trying to have a bit of a, a stigma attached to that, oh don't tell people that we met online sort of thing, well that's, that's the normal thing these days, do you know what I mean? Um, people are just emerged in their tech and yeah, that that's just seems to be the, the normal way. Even the bully. Uh, oh, Kim uh, received the Yatlik today. Oh, brilliant. Happy day. It's great. Sorry, Petra. Uh, so what, what, do you do for, what do you do for work? Uh, yeah, so I work as an office manager for okay. a property development company. So, yeah, kind of a boring job, but yeah, 
it's all right. <laughs> and then, yeah, we've been working from home since last March, so more, more than a year now, 24 <laughs> seven together. <laughs> <laughs> 24 7 for a year it's been wonderful i've loved every moment i think this has accelerated people's like relationships about 10 times hasn't it you know what i mean because like you said you know where you'd be like not in each other's pockets all day out at your various offices or your jobs or whatever so you don't see each other for like eight to ten hours a day or whatever then you have some time you know first thing in the morning hi love how are you bit of breakfast off you go uh, and then in the evening oh brilliant who's good turn is it for doing dinner this evening and then yeah it seems to work but now everyone's like why, why, why are you even breathing in the same room as me do you know what I mean gonna just pack that in please <laughs> I know, yeah, yeah. I'm so used to him now. Uh, even if, when he goes out with like a rubbish bag, I'm like, where is he? Like, <laughs> what's happening? <laughs> but that is the thing, though, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Because you're used to like being right there, it's like, oh, I'm not seeing him in three and a half minutes. We're, we're, yeah. we're what's happened? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, that's about me. Um, yeah. Awesome. And, and then, so obviously, together, uh, you know, your, your online Instagram presence is uh, Drink Whiskey with Friends. Uh, would you like to tell us all about Drink Whiskey with Friends? Yeah. So, I mean, I, I think I, I have to admit that I kind of dragged you into it a little bit. Um, that it was, it was me, really. I, I started off just purely as a kind of record of, of what, I, what I'd been drinking w with my friends. So um, it, it was just, gonna, I was just going to take photos and then just kind of, keep it almost like an online diary of the different trams because a lot of people, I think, make a note of what they've had and what they've thought of it. Um, yeah. And as soon as as soon as we started it, it just, people started liking the pictures. Um, they they started commenting and, and we found this kind of online community, um, this whiskey community online, which was just massive. Yeah. Um, people from all over the world, um, discussing different whiskies and um, kind of fell in love with it a little bit. Just talking to everyone, everyone was incredibly nice, um, just super open. Um, and you know, you started having more and more drams the more that we got. Um, really? and, you know, yeah. So, so I I started as a beer person. I'm from the Czech Republic, so I mean, yeah. right? I did not beer say that. Beer is cheaper than the water, so. You just have to drink beer, no, for real. Yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, Arian would be like, "Oh, um, do you want to try this one?" And I'm like, "All right, then." And then I would have a sip, and I'm like, "That's not bad." And then he would give me something that's peated, maybe or not peated. So I would like start picking the, you know, the, the main differences, and then it will go a bit deeper and deeper. And I'm like, "Okay, fine." So yeah, that's how he kind of got me into it i would say <laughs> but i'm glad i did i'm glad i did it's um it's much better and more enjoyable uh for me now um than a beer yeah awesome well that's that's great and you know obviously i i, I follow you guys on uh, uh on, on instagram and that and seen some some of the fantastic photos and stuff that they do in fact, in fact i think carl's got the squirrel photo <laughs> so, <laughs> yes <laughs> how cool is that picture do you know what I mean? You look at it and think, that, that's a stuffed squirrel, surely, to get that close. Do you know what I mean? And then you look it's at your nutty notes. So yeah. you just <laughs> it that's it. <laughs> And that's with the lid on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you could have turned it and it was off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, um, and we've, we've, we've gone, we've just kind of expanded that with our with our friends and our, we, we started doing like a few friends tastings um you know for like uh, just just our friends really and, and people online that just started speaking to us and, and having a chat and um so we started doing like splits basically w with with those guys and um you know we were trying to get people to join as couples as, rather than just okay. just themselves so you know so they could bring their partner in and um like some some of our friends that like girlfriends had never, or wives had never drank whiskey before. And they're picking up so many notes from the different whiskeys. They were yeah. so good at like nosing, like tasting the palate. Um, and just, it's, it's an incredible thing really that we, we felt like we've introduced a lot of, a lot of people to it that, that wouldn't. And 
sharing it with your partner at home is is something that's really lovely. Oh, definitely. Without a doubt. I, I struggle with that in my house. Uh, my missus hates the smell of whiskey, hates the taste of whiskey. She's Scottish. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but no, she's just like, no, nah. I said, no, have a try that one. She's like, no, nah, it's just a whiskey. So I try this. Or I, I even do like cocktails and stuff. Well, like, have a try of that. No, I can smell the whiskey. Yeah, oh, man. So I've got no chance uh, of doing that. But she likes a gin. I never used to like gin. Uh, but I've, I've become more, uh, I wouldn't say a fan, but more accustomed to, to trying gins and different types of ones. As well. So, yeah, it can work both ways. It can work both ways. No, but uh, that's great. Uh, and obviously, you guys uh, just started doing some um, competitions as well. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we had quite a few recently. So, yeah, probably people who follow us, they know. Uh, I think this year we've already had like four or five. Yeah. So, qu quite a few. Uh, and I must say, and this is this is true, that the most popular one was the Mac Mirror one. Uh, we just had, I think, two weeks ago, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. I remember seeing that picture first of all and going, that's cool. Because obviously you went for like the, the anime, because obviously the Japanese green tea. And uh, so you went for like an anime sort of style. But that was that was fantastic, really creative. Yeah. You can see we've got quite a lot of free time now. So... <laughs> 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 yeah, that was so much fun taking the pictures and I was watching on YouTube a videos how to do a makeup like yeah, a, yeah, yeah. You know, Japanese anime. Um so it was it was very fun and um I hope that the followers also enjoy that and obviously uh the winner enjoyed it even more. <laughs> yes, absolutely. That's the thing, it's great to do giveaways because it feels like you're you're actually giving whiskey to someone to enjoy yeah. and, and and that's it's such a good feeling, especially when they're they're really happy about it as well. And it's for them, it's like giving a present to a stranger. Yeah, so, yeah, um, yeah. Do your um the the your competition winners? Do they get back in touch with you after they've had a dram from it and go, oh, really? Thanks for this, guys. It's a great whiskey. Or I'm gonna take this one back and give me another one, please. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they never say that. Um, I don't know if it's because it was for free, <laughs> but no, it never happened. But yeah, we've got. A um, couple of people that came back and said they enjoyed it, or awesome. uh, even people who sh who you know who shared it with, they they also liked it. So yeah, we do have the feedback from them. Yeah, hundred percent. That's awesome. It's it's nice to feel. It's, it's all very well and good. You know, you run a competition and as a giveaway and that. It's just so easy to enter. Oh, you're the winner. You go great, great, thanks. And you don't hear back from them or anything. You think it's a bit not quite what you're trying to achieve with drink whiskey, your friends, is it really? Yeah, I, I know what you mean. It's it's. It's that when you are giving away, you just you don't know if they're going to appreciate it or if they're going to enjoy it. But we found that everyone that's that's won a bottle has just been delighted, and and oh. we normally get we normally get some 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 sort of feedback. Um, typically, you know, as it arrives, we get kind of a commentary about like it's arrived. Um, they've opened it, and I love it when they send pictures or post a story, like just to say that they're having it. And I nice. think we've got we've got a couple where they'd actually like poured it with the three or four of them in the house and they were just like, look, this is a, and you know, for that, there's yeah. no better feeling. Oh, there was one guy actually, he won a whiskey and he said, oh, this is actually my dad's favorite whiskey. Can you please send it to him as like a present oh, nice. from you and from me? And it was, it was very emotional, actually. <laughs> That's quite a nice thing, isn't it? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's very touchy, yeah, yeah, so. No, that's brilliant, guys. So, is it, what, what's your plans for taking drinking whiskey with friends forward then? Um, or is it just gonna, you're just going to keep doing what you're doing, or is there any plans to to up the game, if it were? <laughs> a little bit. I mean, we get. Not that it needs that. Out. Please, please don't think that I, I'm telling you you need to up your game. That is not what I'm asking in, remotely. <laughs> Don't worry, we're, we're always we're always trying to up our game. I think from the especially ours, especially me. <laughs> He is very competitive. Let's put it this way. I, I think it's from for me. It's when I when we first started, um, we actually got some feedback from some of the distil distilleries because we were like, "Well, we're going to do reviews. You know, what should we do? Have you got any advice for us?" Um, and uh, there was a couple, and particularly there's one that's one of my favourite distilleries. Was kind of like, you know, your photos aren't good enough. They're just not not good high quality. Um, you need to look at um, 
the barrel, barrel to bottle, you know, the, the beautiful RT shots. And I said to Petra immediately, I, I think I'm going to need a camera <laughs> and I think I'm going to have to learn how to use it. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> and it's, and it was, it was difficult at first and I'm still not the best photographer. Um, and you're very good. Yeah, but I still think it's not what we're going for. Um, obviously we're trying to kind of upscale the photos so it looks good, but it's not, it's not the main reason why we're doing yeah. it. So as, as I, f I would say it's 50% the photo for us and 50% the comments and what we think and how we feel about it. So it's probably never going to be the, the high quality professional pictures uh that you can put on the billboard <laughs> but it will just be us me and Arian, and probably so me holding the bottle somewhere freezing outside <laughs> and Arian trying to take a picture and i'll be like oh my god can we go home now i've got i have enough uh and yeah that's that's like a story behind it so it's not like um pro um equipment and crew or something it's just literally two of us <laughs> yeah. having fun yeah Exactly, exactly. And, and you know, I you just nailed it with that last comment there, you know, it's just a bit of fun for you. You know, you're not there to make money from it. You're not there to do, you know, promote any particular brand or whatever. You're just a, a, a nice couple having a bit of a laugh, enjoying the dram and putting some pictures and sharing it with people, you know. Uh, and, you know, that's the aim right there, isn't it? It's not to be, oh, actually, yes, you know, we represent X brand and with this. No, it's not what it's about. It's about sharing uh, your passion for having a drum together, really. And I think that's fantastic, quite frankly. Thank you. <laughs> and also, obviously, Arian likes to um, see all the um, sales and all the releases and share it with people. Uh, yeah. So I would sometimes come to Arya and say, "Do you know this one is going to be or has been released?" And he said, "Yeah, yeah, I've already, I've already ordered that one. Like yeah. I was so behind." It's on its way, though. It's on its way. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I would, I would miss all of that. Um, and he's, he's really good at it. He remember, yeah, he just likes, you know, um, kind of hunting for, for the bargains. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Awesome. So, what, um, apart from Mac Mirror, obviously. What's been like your um, favorite experience with a drum? Uh, what's yeah? What's been like your favorite? Maybe not your favorite drum per se, because that's you know that can change from one week to the next. But probably your your most favorite experience with with a drum. I think so. For me, it's uh, Tomatin was the brand that kind of got me into whiskey. So that was the one which kind of like started me off. It was really the fourteen year old Portwood. Um, and, and I, I just love that dram. So, so when someone, I think it was at Milroy's as well, that someone was like, oh, you've got to try this. Um, and for me, that was kind of my light bulb dram. So the one that like, you know, ah, oh, um, and please. yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, your eyes light up, uh, you know, the light comes down, um, and you're like, oh, I need to, you know, go out and, and buy 10 of these and, and keep them in my card. But um, yeah, it's, uh, it's that, I think that's probably my, my intro dram. And then I think from there, we've, we've got really into Glendronic as well. Um, because Petrol, you love the sherry, um, the sherry drams. Mm -hmm. um, so, and you, you know, when it comes to sherry, there's the, the Glendronics, there's the Glen Allergies, they're difficult to beat. Um, for, for the, the sherry drums. So, yeah. yeah. What about you? Um, this is actually an amazing question because I would say for me, as, as important the taste is, the, 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 the environment or the, the moment is for me as important as Very much. probably as a woman. I don't know, but it is. So, um, I would share with you a time we went to Jordan. It was last year in March. Yeah, end of the beginning of March uh, for holiday. Um, and um, we went to Petra. <laughs> and why and, would you not? <laughs> yeah. But Petra was in Petra, yeah. <laughs> and obviously it was amazing just as it was. But yeah, Arian took uh, a little tomato in with us. <laughs> oh, brilliant. And um, yeah, we... We had, you know, we had drum there, but and there was there was the moment and the whiskey, and 
everything together and the taste and you know that i will never forget so yeah i'm quite an emotional person <laughs> no, fantastic because you know I, i'm a big proponent um of you know whiskey is about experiences and sharing yeah it's all very well and good having a very nice bottle but if you sat in the house by yourself it's not going to be as good I mean, there's going to be, you know, it's going to be a fantastic liquid without question or doubt. Uh, but, you know, it's, you can get a mediocre bottle, uh, you know, if mediocre whiskey exists. So I know we've all got our different opinions on that. Uh, but so you could take a, maybe not like maybe one of your best malts, say, um, and share it with some pals, you know, and we'll get onto this later on and we'll talk a bit deeper about it when we do the whiskey scenario at last orders. Um, but yes, it's about that experience uh, with, with some pals and being able to share it and stuff like that as well, isn't it? You know, I, I think so. Things like that are oh, they? Oh, brilliant! <laughs> so Carl's pretty good at like um, stalking people's social medias, uh, <laughs> and finding exactly what we're talking about and being quite quick with it as well. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Of that. Yeah. So don't be surprised if you, like, you go. Hang on a minute, I, I didn't send that picture in. What on earth is going on? <laughs> That, that, that's what King Stalker does, bless him. He'll, he'll give me grief now for calling him King Stalker, but it's fine. Um, so, no. so, guys, talking about like experiences and things like that as well, um, who's probably been the most, um, you know, most memorable people you've met so far on your whiskey journey? Oh, my gosh, there's so many. There's so many. That's It's just, uh, oh, my God, where to even start? I think um, for the, on the Instagram side, we've, we've just met, bazillions of people that are, you know people that I message and we message on a day-to-day -day basis now um which is just crazy you never met yeah some of them are like we've never met in person but genuinely feel like we're close friends with them um so <laughs> there's just loads that there's the, the London Whiskey Club guys um you know the, the people at Milroy's um you know th there's amazing shops that we've met like the, the people that like run these whiskey shops uh, are just fantastic people as well. We, we end up having quite, you know, long chats and, and conversations. Um, and I think like the other day we, we actually got sent bottles before we paid for them. Like he knew I would want them. So yeah. he, he just was like, Oh yeah, I put those two aside for you. Cause I know you'd want those. And then I, I, I posted them. Fantastic. And then he was like, yeah, just, just ring up and pay whenever. And I just, yeah. Uh, okay. yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, we live in London. It just doesn't happen here. It doesn't happen. No. no. <laughs> so. That's, I mean, that's the difference. I think it's just, you just feel like you're part of a community and um, that, you know, there's, there's people out there as well that you just meet and, and end up having these massive long conversations with. I think it's, um, I think re recently as well, when you go to, I don't know if you find this as well, but when I go to the supermarket, and I see someone umming and ahhing over a whiskey aisle. I, I'm my my temptation. No, 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 no. This is what happens. Yeah. <laughs> this is like reality. This is what's happening every time you go to Tesco's or Sainsbury's. Whilst I'm picking a bread or eggs. <laughs> just just sometimes want to see what what they're going for. Why are they going for it? What's happening? Yeah, and Aaron giving them advice is like, yeah, this one is really good price. Or like, have you tried this one? Oh, okay, you try this one. So you will like this one, buy this one. <laughs> I don't know if you find that. Is yeah. it, do you get that as well? Like whenever you see whiskey wanting just to chat to someone about it. Yeah. And, uh, Obviously pre-COVID, pre pre-lockdown, pre uh, or lockdown more specifically, more than anything else really. Um, it'd be like in whiskey bars or in bars. And people would I in mean, an R in about a whiskey to choose and they're talking and you're like oh, or especially in non whiskey specific bars where the bar staff maybe aren't as clued up uh, on, on like sing single malts and, and, and whiskey in general. That's not their fault. Do you know what I mean? It's just one of these things that happens, isn't it? You know, it's just a normal pub. And you go, oh, what whiskey have you got? You go, oh, we've got like these. And you sat there and go, and your, your ear pricks up a little bit more and you go, okay, what are they, what are they going to say? I, I, and, and it's hard sometimes if, if I'm with my partner, she'll go, no, don't, just don't. <laughs> like, but I've not, I've not done anything. I'm not, you know, yeah. well, if, if I'm by myself or with some of the boys or whatever like that, it's like, well, hang on a second. Just let me tell you something. <laughs> oh, just shut up and get it. <laughs> but no, I, I, I know exactly what, what, what you mean there. 
you just want to express your passion to other people as well and, and share and share your love for something um, with, with with as many people as possible. It's not about showing off and, oh, I know all this stuff. It's not about that at all. It's like, mate, if you really want a whiskey, then depend, what, what do you normally like to eat and drink? Oh, well, well, in that case, then they've got like that one and that one up there. That would probably suit your palate sort of thing. Do you know what I mean? And, and just trying to, trying to engage with people more than sort of like lecture people, really. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and I find the whiskey community is really good for that. Um, whether you're in like whether you're in a bar in London uh, or you you know up in Aberdeen, a very specialist whiskey bar or something like that, you know, the, the people you can get talking to, you know, uh, one of my favourite pubs uh, in Glasgow. I, I mean, I live in Glasgow. Um, is uh, you've got the Pot Steel and the Bon Accord, uh, two very famous um, whiskey pubs uh, in Glasgow, uh, and the staff in there are always knowledgeable. And just the patrons that, you know, that go into the pub when, when we're allowed in the pub, that is, obviously, um, are just dead nice as well. You know, everything from, like, 18-year-olds up to, like, 70-year-olds. You know what I mean? And everybody in between, you know, sharing that same conversation and same love for a product, you know. Uh, it's, it's amazing to, to take in. Uh, as like a, a, a not, I wouldn't say an outsider, but you know, when you walk into the pub and you're looking at what's what's happening, or maybe you're not a, a particular regular uh, to that pub or something, and you're seeing, you know, this this um, 19 year old, 20 year old uh, young lady speaking with a 75 year old man about a drama that they're having, you know, mm-hmm. uh, and everything in between. Is when you go, that's amazing. Mm-hmm. What what other what other situations can you find yourself in, really, where you get to observe that and and be a part of that as well? So don't forget, you know, you know, you, you end up talking to somebody younger than yourself, older than yourself, you know, another couple, etc. You know what I mean? And you just start talking. Oh, how did you get into it? Oh, what's your favourite drama at the bar and all that sort of stuff? Like, you know, um, for me, that's just that's phenomenal. Oh, Sorry, I'm a bit of a bit of a waffle on. <laughs> Absolutely, the, the way it brings people together is 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 for me like nothing else it's i mean we've we've been going through airports where i've had glen karen's in a bag before and i had like four glen karen's in my hand luggage and they stopped us and were like what is this like mm. why have you got all this glass and i was like oh well it's for our whiskey blog and then i kind of started showing a couple of pictures and mm. then we ended up in security for 20 minutes just <laughs> talking about whiskey with the person in security <laughs> was like, That's oh, fantastic. Like, are we are we getting on the plane, or are we just going to chat about? Are we going to spend spend our holiday or spend our long weekend here just chatting the security guides about whiskey and that? Yeah. Maybe get a free tour after hours around duty free. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yeah, yeah. exactly. Brilliant, yeah. guys. A, a question for you from Nicola. So Nicola was on our um, ladies' night uh, on Monday for International uh, International Women's Day. Uh, Hi, folks. You mentioned the Grotte earlier. Do you have any other favourite unique cask matured whiskies? So mm. forget about, um, you know, your typical sherries and stuff like that and your typical bourbons, you know, proper unique, whether that's a particular unique sherry cask or, you know, we're just, you, obviously, I think the reason for asking that question is obviously, you know, we've used green tea, like Japanese green tea to season Exoloroso casks, you know, and that in itself is very unusual. In fact, I think we're the only people in the world to have done it. Um, so yeah, so other unique cask finished whiskies, guys. Yeah, so I think there's a, there's a couple there's a couple actually that I re- one of them's probably not that unique, and people are gonna be like, oh, this has been around for ages. But for me, um, <laughs> the Glenallachy Premier Cru. So I I hadn't had many Premier Cru finished whiskies before, um, and we tried at London Whiskey Club, I think, and and you I think you told me at the time it was like strawberries and cream or something, mm-hmm. right? It and for me, it was an absolutely incredible, incredible dram. Um, we went out and bought a bottle um, straight away, like the day after. Uh, have you got one? No, not not that. We're not one of those. Yeah. No. Um, we we have uh, a similar product. So oh. uh, not a lot of whiskey companies have done anything with. Let's loosely call them champagne casks. We know mm. champagne happens in the bottle, not not in the cask, etc. So yeah, so this is our our moment prestige, uh, and, and that's uh, on average a fourteen year old whiskey, uh, and it's first, second, and third filled um, premier and grand cru 
uh, wine that that's that has come from. So uh, so we we have our version. Uh, obviously, Glenn Fiddick have got the uh, I've got a, a twenty three year old Premier Crew. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. So there's a couple out there. So I I definitely class them uh, as unique. Yeah. Uh, rarer for sure because there's you know not a lot of people have done many things with it. No. Yeah. No, absolutely. And um, it's yeah that that was a that was a really amazing dram. And then um, we've been quite enjoying the Fisherman's Retreat um, Aaron White Wine um, finished whiskey that they've got at the moment. That that is really really delicious. Um, is, it, is that an Australian white wine they've used? Yes, it's got a wine of your name, hasn't it? Yeah, it's um, it, I don't know how to pronounce it. I was going to say, don't this point if you could pronounce it, mate. <laughs> yeah. uh, don't even try. Don't even try. I won't even try. I'm terrible. But um, yeah, it's, it's. So have you have you tried that one? Because it... I haven't tried it yet. No, I've seen it, hmm. uh, but I've not managed to have a try of it yet. So uh, yeah, but no. It's, yeah, so that definitely fits in the the uniqueness as well. Our uh, bully's gone for Vintergrad. It's an amazing, unique cask. Yeah, Vintergrad, Vintergrad, Vintergrad. Where are you, Vintergrad? Vintergrad. So that's um, mold wine casks. Mm. So pre uh, previous uh, American oak cask that had that had mulled wine. So it's a it's a right good. And that's from Christmas. Oh, so winter release three years ago. Yeah, three years ago winter release. Um, stunning. It is what I'd definitely call uh, Christmas in a bottle for sure. You know, you know, lots of people say it with the heavily sherried stuff. You know, mm -hmm. oh, you know, this is our Christmas in the glass sort of thing. Um, well, this really literally is because the wine is produced in Sweden for Christmas. You know, it's, it's quite a big thing in Sweden for, for mulled wine, uh, mm -hmm. and that particular producer especially. Um, yeah, so that is literally our Christmas in the glass. Sounds wonderful. Sounds delicious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It is, uh, but you mentioned port. You, you're a big fan of that. So the tomato and pork cask was, was your first proper like wow dram. Uh, our pork cask is well, what I'm having in my cocktail at the moment, Vintersol. So that's Quinta de Volado uh, pork casks that we use. So they're like one of the oldest, if not the oldest, in the Maduro Valley. Uh, so we're one of the, the the original producers of of port in, in that region. Uh, so yeah, oh. Vintersol. Time for the second round. I, I think I'll have a I think I'll have a wee one of those actually. Oh, I'm very jealous. We're going for from Quinnahaven for our second round. Oh beautiful. I, oh <laughs> the richest one from Wings. Yes. That's fantastically amazingly priced. Unbelievably priced. Well, so, question for you then on uniqueness. What's unique about that particular bottle? <laughs> <laughs> the spelling? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> this drives them crazy, I've heard. Like, <laughs> honest to God, right? So, I think it's amazing. I think it's an amazing marketing thing. Like, it's amazing. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, uh, uh, Phil, Phil, Phil Walker's, yeah, Bruno Harvard without the H, yet. Yeah, correct, Phil. Uh, or, yeah. Uh, and it still works. You still know exactly what it is, and it's still twenty-eight-year-old Boona at the end of the day for like one hundred and fifty quid or somewhere thereabouts. So uh, yeah, do you know what they missed a H, but it's at a cracking price. I'm available, quite frankly. I am available, not a problem whatsoever. Yeah, but uh, the, yeah, the, the social media basically had a bit of a meltdown, didn't it? When the first few people got the hold of their bottles and like, hmm. I mean, how? And this is something that annoys me with the whiskey community, right? How we could be so friendly one minute, right? And like we've just spoken about, right? To being really, really, like, angrily retentive about a really small detail like that. That's the dark side, yeah. yeah. It's like, guys, come on. It's 150 quid bottle. It's not one for, you know, for storing away to, for your grandkids' college or anything like that. Do you know what I mean? It's a drinking, you know, 150 quid for 28 year old Boona. Doesn't happen very often. Uh, when it does, it's normally an absolute cracker. So get it drunk. You know, that, that's not putting anybody's grandkids through, through university in the future, is it, at the end of the day, you know? No. And it, it's a bit like a misstamped coin. I think it's actually yeah. more pretty yeah. because it's... I think it's, it's amazing. I would keep it just because of that. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. 
<laughs> to tell people that fact, to be like, oh, we've got this Bunahaven, but it's actually spelt incorrectly. No. Yes, it's not. It's not a true Bunahaven. Bunahaven. So with that, then, and we're talking about what's 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 your I don't know unicorn drum, as it were. What's one that maybe you've had, but you've had to you know like not eat for about three weeks to be able to afford it. Uh, you know, so one of those really proper once in a lifetime type jams. Uh, do you have one? Oh, there's a, I mean, I think we, the bottle that I had that was the, at the time, I remember it was very painful because it, it was the Glendronic um, uh, 5852, which is um, from the whiskey shop. Um, and, it was it was quite a lot for a bottle at the time <laughs> for me. Yeah. It still, kind of is. It, it definitely is. Um, but it, when I knew as well, that's one that I tried a sample of. Say someone sent a sample, and I was just I, I just have to get this. And um, you didn't get to try the sample, so I was like, I'm I'm going to have to get the bottle. Um, uh, and other people have given us really bits of unicorn bottles. Like um, we went when we went to we went to Bimba Distillery. Um, oh, yeah. and yeah um and um we got to try a Lagavulin 25 um oh, beautiful which was just incredible um single mole vault um thank you um but it, you know just the 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 chance to try that was just incredible so i think there's been a, there's been a, there's been, there's so many there's so many out there now as well that and that's the thing, isn't it? You know I mean, there, there is quite a lot of things like that coming, you know, more more readily available. And is that the right phrase I want to use? Yeah, probably. Um, and the fact that, you know, they're out there, you can buy them if, you know, you're prepared to give up a couple of kidneys and a liver or something like, you know? Yeah. Well, that's a good one. So what's the most expensive whiskey you have drunk and was it worth it? it it's so difficult, actually. So some of them... The, the answer is that some of them okay, are. So I can't, sorry, I can't answer this question because I'm never told the right price. <laughs> <laughs> so all the whis whiskies we've been drinking are around 30 to 50 quid. Uh, but yeah, Arian probably can give you a better answer. Yes. <laughs> so well, I think you just summed up a lot of relationships there, Petra. And, and that goes both ways as well. Do you know what I mean? That, that's not, just not like, you know, the woman being told, but it's, it's also, you know, it could be vice versa as well. But no, I, I, that's just summed up quite a few. It's like, uh, it's like a, it's a, quite a popular meme that flies about, um, you know, uh, like you, you, you're dead worried, so you're, like you're on your deathbed sort of thing, right? And your biggest worry in the world is that, that your, your partner sells your whiskey collection for what she thinks you paid for it, sort of thing. Right? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Like there was, we, were, we were having this joke where I was telling you that everything was twenty nine ninety nine for quite a while. I was like, yeah, it's on offer, twenty nine ninety nine, brilliant. <laughs> and you were just like, yeah, yeah. No, it's not. My line used to be, so I used to keep reptiles, right? P predominantly big snakes, so like reticulated pythons, Burmese pythons, all that sort of good stuff. Um, yeah. And um, my biggest, um, my front room, so where my whiskey is now used to be uh, or snake vivariums, um, or along the wall and then the opposite wall as well, and in the bedroom and everything. But I only live in a I only live in a two bedroom tenement flat in Glasgow, right? And um, and um, so it's just like, oh, love, you never guess. This snake's come up. I've been wanting it for ages. Don't, they don't come up very often, and it's a really good price. Yeah, you know I mean, without actually saying, well, actually, I, I, I passed up on like fifteen of them last week and stuff. <laughs> So yeah, so I, I honestly I get those lines. Sorry, excuse me. Uh, yeah, that was. <laughs> Bully's been telling fibs in the news. <laughs> so my my additional technique as well was to actually send them to my parents' house at one stage. But you cornered onto this to actually send it to, and my mum would hide it under the stairs for me. And then I would, I would, when we were back to port, I was like, oh no, I've had this one forever. I've, I've always had this one since birth, I think. Yeah, <laughs> I've, I've got a good excuse now. 
Okay. So I oh, love it's just a bottle for work. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, but that's not a Mac Mirror. Oh, that's okay. It's from uh, from somebody else. We're doing a bottle swap on stuff and things like that. So, I mean, for for like upcoming shows and everything like that. <laughs> <laughs> so so there we go let's see what i mean so it does happen the other way around as well so yeah. tomorrow tomorrow's husband is quite skeptical that she wins quite a bit of whiskey here <laughs> she's yeah. so lucky <laughs> yeah. it's got the golden touch <laughs> exactly uh tomorrow so if you don't mind dropping us the uh the winning lottery numbers uh that'd be good uh if you don't mind just like pm'ing them that'd be fantastic pal <laughs> oh dear oh dear so your most expensive whiskey most expensive whiskey i'm so curious now <laughs> i've i've bought is the is the kingsman so the glendronic kingsman um what was that about 750 quid yeah it's, it's yeah it was seven yeah was, it was actually 29.99 and um <laughs> no um it had a small dent on the box you see uh so they, they had to price drop it <laughs> yeah. and that's that's one which was worth it like i've been i've i've definitely bought bottles before we bought bottles before um i mean the Ardbird that we bought recently the the 14 well supposed to be 14 year old but the nas um that that was 140 pounds or something that that to me it wasn't worth it it, it just it just wasn't um I've not opened mine yet i got two bottles i've not opened mine yet it's still good it's don't get me wrong it's still it's still it's still good down we we like i mean you're not as big a fan of the peat but you didn't really like it no but um it it, it, was, it was still good drown but 140. Gotcha. have you tried any of the mac mirror peated bottles spence got it or spence got it no i haven't i think no Okay, I'll get something sent down to you. Um, so, yeah, no, so uh, my most expensive bottle was probably, well, I'm trying to gauge now, but one that sticks in my mind, there's probably been one or two more expensive, but not by much, but the one that really sticks out, and it was totally worth it because I polished the bottle off within eight months, um, was the, the um, Balveni uh, Doublewood 25-year-old. That was, I mean, I, a big fan of the 12, loved, loved the 17, but the 25 was just phenomenal. Um, and the fun, funny thing is, right, I looked at the price tag, right, and I thought, oh, that's a really good price. I'll get that, right? Went to the till to pay for it. Uh, it was not that price that I thought, it, I, I misread the price tag. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. I, pay, I, I ended up paying like, well, and it was the proper price. Do you know what I mean? That that they tried it, it wasn't a rip off or anything like that. No. I had just been a bit daft and misread the price tag. <laughs> so I was expecting, you know, old old Billy Digball was like doing that. Yeah, it's just not a problem. Put it in there. It's such a that right. Okay. It's like it's supposed to be I, I thought it said three two five, right? Uh and the and it was actually four fifty. Now how that even looks similar, I don't know. The, you know, the numbers don't even look the same. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, well, maybe you, you just saw what you wanted to see. Yeah. <laughs> that's got a lot. That's got a valid point. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's potential that that could have happened. Yeah. <laughs> this is why I'd like to pay for it. Yes. That's, uh, <laughs> this is the maximum offer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what did you do when you got to the counter? Did you did you just go? Oh, yeah, no worries. Or did you like pause? And oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, my, I still had my Billy Big Boys pants on. Like, yeah, no problem. Boom. <laughs> And he's like, what did she say how much that was? Oh, but, <laughs> but yeah, but l luckily enough, I had enough money on that particular card. So that was, that was good. It wasn't like an embarrassing moment. Do you know what I mean? Because uh, yeah. <laughs> that, oh, that, that, that probably would have ended me. But no, that was a fantastic. And I'd, I'd say it was definitely worth it. Uh, mainly because it was like limited edition as well. You know, if you do get them, they're, they're the circa 450, 500 pound mark. Um, depending on where they're available, if they're still available, because um, obviously it was only a limited run. Uh, but that was that was that was a beautiful jump. That was a beautiful jump. Oh. Yeah, sometimes as well the the those really expensive ones uh, that are special because you feel that they're special. You you you've made the decision. You you know that you've you've paid this much for it, and yeah, yeah, and yeah. you're excited to try it, and uh, it it adds to it to somewhat something that you you spend a, a decent chunk of money on but aren't that excited about 
that it's never as much as worth it as saving up and getting something you really want. Nice. Well, so, so, so <laughs> my pal Jim uh, lives just on the road from me. <laughs> His most expensive bottle that he's ever purchased better be sat on my shelf. Um, it's not on my shelf, Jim. Um, it's sat next to the shelves in, the, in its box still that it got delivered in. I opened it up to make sure it was what it's supposed to be and then put it back in the box and put it to the side, mate. So, no, it's not on the shelf. Uh, it happens to be a, a rather expensive um, Lagavulin. Uh, is it mm. a Lagavulin? Or, or a Freud. It's one of the things. But it's an SMWS bottle in anyway. Um, it's it's going to be good. It's going to be good. Um, Aaron, is that your mum, Dawn, or is that your sister? Yeah, that is, yeah. She's re referencing the cat. <laughs> She's like, so one of our one of our features, I guess, on our Instagram is, uh, is Sabre. He's a big fan favourite. Um, and he's Bengal. Um, there he is, yeah. SM is a kitten. Oh, look at that. Oh, man, that is just cute. I'm not really a cat person, <laughs> but you can't help but fall in love with a face like that, can you? Exactly. You know I mean? Oh, sorry. It, it's an art bag. Jim's bottle's an art bag. That, that, that photo is amazing. Yeah. I like that. I like that. We, 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 do have a, we do have a repost for you, don't we, Carl? There's our. <laughs> Love that! What a cutie. Uh, honestly, just there's something about kittens. Oh, there you go. Look, keep keep Mac keeping guard over the moments. Brilliant. So I, I love it when you can get animals to sit at that right spot. There's just something about it. Do you know what I mean? Uh, and it just it just sets your picture off fantastically well. It's so, really rich with cats and squirrels, though. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Don't try, don't try that one together. That might not end up as a pretty picture, like. Uh, but there you go. Uh, so we've got uh, also Bully's most expensive dram was a Highland Park King Christian, and it was worth it. That is an expensive bottle. That is an expensive bottle. Well, tomorrow got a black, old oh, lovely. Uh, what what version of the black art was it, T? Because they they are fantastic. So do you know about black art? No. From so it's made by Brook Laddie. It was um, Jim's basically is. Uh, cloak and dagger type stuff, really specialist casks type things. And uh, yeah, they've all been great. Oh, the 7.1, nice. But I think that was the first one uh, Adam Hamnett put together after uh, after Jim departed. Uh, not died or anything like that. Obviously, we all know Jim's still alive. But after he left, after he left Brook Laddie. Um, what whiskey photo are you? Oh, brilliant. That's a good one. I like that. What whiskey photo are you most proud of? Ooh. I think I know yours. Yeah, tap it out. I think you must be most proud of the photo you um, diving. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, we did. Yeah, so again, this is on our our Instagram as well. We actually we actually took a bottle of diving. No, you us. did. I took a bottle of diving <laughs> in the Red Sea. Oh, sweet! And we got the diving instructor to take a photo. Whilst we were holding the bottle, I like, was holding the bottle at shipwreck. So we dived a shipwreck. I carried a, a whiskey bottle in the top pocket of my diving. Yeah. So, yeah and then definitely. just like popped out and took a photo. Um, so yeah, that that's probably pretty high up there. And and I think what would you what would you say? I, I'd probably say also the the ones in Petra. So I think I think some of the shots that we got of the desert in in, in Petra as well. Um, well, lovely. But. I thought you were just being dead romantic there by saying just pictures you've taken off Petra. Oh, yes. Uh, <laughs> cool. <laughs> oh. so what's your favourite then, Petra? Um, the mo I'm most proud of. You, have, you can say one of you. I know that you would never say that, but you could, you could, just, you could just be like... You know oh, what? I would, I'm, I'm going to say that because... I'm a really shy person. I don't like public speaking. So being here tonight is actually a big challenge for me. And okay. Arian taking pictures of me, it's also always a big challenge for both of us. <laughs> because I'm like, no, 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 this is not good enough. And look at my ear and look at it. And I'm never happy. Um, so yeah, I'm always proud of the, the outcome that Arian can you know, 
he's not he's not really um adjusting them like no. yeah yeah, yeah. Proper stuff so yeah i'm i'm quite a problem myself standing there um in front of the camera and you know uh so yeah yeah. <laughs> oh no <laughs> <laughs> Not to embarrass you on screen or anything, Petra, but... You know. Thanks! <laughs> yeah. you know, it's, it's quite strange that you say that you're, you're a bit more introverted and things like that, because, you know, it must have took a lot of guts for yourself then, really, to, to, to do the anime shot for the Grant Tay thing, you know, because that is quite, you know, it is quite out there and, and, you know, did you find that easier because you were dressed up as somebody else? No, unfortunately, no. No. <laughs> no. no. I, I did enjoy it, but again, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm a shy person, an introvert, and um, so I'm, yeah, kind of challenging myself in a way. Well, you I, I like it. Like it. Yeah. <laughs> you, you are doing a great job at hiding it, Paul. I'll give you that for sure. Thank you. <laughs> well, Je Jess has chimed in. Uh, Jess had the Mortlock 75 year old, <laughs> but as a funny girl, she didn't pay for it. Oh. Ooh. So she can't say that that must have been a fair a fair pricey dram. Um woofed. Okay. Nice. Nice. So guys, I think that takes us to uh to our cheeky little girl there for uh, the last orders. So as everybody knows that regularly watches now, last orders brings about the whiskey scenario question. So that's what's in your glass, where are you, and who are you with? Now I'm gonna ask each of you individually and you cannot see each other. That's the only stipulation. <laughs> so, uh, Petra, would you care okay. to go? So, I've been thinking about it the whole hour. <laughs> <laughs> it was like in the back of my mind, <laughs> all the different scenarios. Uh, but I think the one that is kind of winning is me, no one else, somewhere in the cottage, like in the woods, in the middle of nowhere. Don't know why. With, not, with like a fire and winter outside, like a snow maybe, and me drinking Kilcarran because um, it's now my kind of favorite distillery. Yes. I would say. Yeah, we had a whiskey tasting a couple of weeks ago, and these guys really got me with like their story and the approach yeah. to like how they run the business. And Fantastic story, isn't it? Fantastic story. It's just amazing. And I just, I just love them and I love the whiskey. So, yeah, that's my scenario. <laughs> it sounds very similar to mine. Uh, so, when, so on our first, was it our first or our second guest we had on when we started the Mac Mirror in, uh, or when we started doing um, the whiskey scenario uh, as, a, as a regular feature. Um, so someone uh, asked me, and, and I was uh, in a cottage in the middle of nowhere, fire on, cigar, and uh, lecture 18. Uh, on my own, uh, maybe maybe the yeah. but yeah. So that sounds very similar to mine. So yeah, uh, I, I, I can feel you. You don't have to have somebody there with you. Even though we just had a conversation earlier about how drinking whiskey is about sharing the experience with friends and, and people around you and that as well. So our both of our ideal situations goes completely against what we normally believe in. That's my second personality. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. So Aaron, what about yourself, sir? So I'm going to have to to go opposite to that completely. With um, for me, it's definitely in company, um, and I think my my favourite scenario would be somewhere outside, sitting outside, either at a at a dinner, right? um, or you know, at a picnic outside. You've got a bottle that you're splitting, sharing with with uh, with people that haven't tried the bottle before. That's I think that's when they when they don't know what they're about to have. And, and you've had it before, you know how good it is, that for me. So I'd be in a park, maybe having some picnic stuff with, with a few friends, maybe opening a, a Glendronach 18. Um, nice. I think that would be, that's ideal. I can't wait for that. <laughs> that, sounds, that sounds nice and actually like, like proper achievable as well. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Uh, as opposed to, you know, like the person being with you, like, you know, some sort of like dead celebrity or some dram that's just like not made ever again and stuff like that. Do you know what I mean? That's, you know, you could actually live your whiskey scenario without too much of an effort. Do you know what I mean? G given, you know, as long as this, this whole malarkey we're facing at the moment buggers off, like, do you know what I mean? So, Absolutely. 
That's great. No, I love that, guys. Uh, so, guys, that wraps us up uh, for this edition of the Mac Mirror Inn. Thank you so much, Petra uh, uh, and Aaron, for joining us this evening. You've been absolute stars. I told you the hour goes dead quick. Super, 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 yeah. super. Dead quick. And thank you for having us, honestly. It's been really absolute fun. Absolute pleasure. Honestly, yeah. absolute my pleasure. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for uh, for tuning in this evening uh, and, and putting up with, uh, with our crap chat for the past hour. Well, my crap chat, at least. These two are actually pretty decent. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so thanks for the interaction. Thanks for tuning in. Remember, invite your pals to, uh, to, like, the, to like our social media pages. Uh, tune in next Thursday uh, for our core range and uh, yak liquor tasting. Uh, there are still some packs available if you're really quick uh, from macmira.co.uk. Uh, so get yourself a pack and join us on Thursday. Or if not, join us next Friday where we welcome uh, Hector McLean, uh, of Jeffrey Street Whiskey. Uh, so, for this evening, guys, thank you very much for joining me and uh, shko. Cheers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>